never answers any questions. He never answers any questions. And it looks like he didn't ask his Transport Secretary any questions either. The truth is, he appointed a person convicted of fraud to the Cabinet. The first thing she did was bung hundreds of millions of pounds in pay rises to her trade union friends. Wasn't this a fraud on the British people? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Speaker, she says she's not talking about immigration. I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, and I, I, I advise her and all of them not to talk about the economy or immigration for another five years. Mr. Speaker, you can try and change the topic as much as he likes, but the public are watching. He owes them an explanation. The country needs conviction politicians, not politicians with convictions. Now, on to an even bigger fraud. Now, on to an even bigger fraud, the budget. Last week, the Prime Minister failed to repeat the Chancellor's pledge of no more borrowing and no more taxes. Yep. It is obvious that they are coming back for more. Yep. In his manifesto, he committed to making Britain the fastest growing economy in the G7. Does he stand by his own pledge? Yep. Mr. Speaker, I gently remind her that two of her predecessors had convictions yep. uh, for, for, break, for breaking the COVID rules. I also invite her to look at the OECD report of this morning, which has upgraded growth for next year and the year after, which now puts us on target to be the highest growing major economy in Europe in the next two years. She should welcome that. Pete Wish. Speaker, uh, today is the Scottish Budget, and then inside it you will find provisions to reinstate the winter fuel payment to all of Scottish pensioners, something that he, of course, famously took away from nearly all of the UK pensioners supported by Scottish Labour members of Parliament. But apparently, Scottish Labour are now in favour of winter fuel payments. So what's his advice to Labour MSPs? Is it to vote for the budget to ensure that Scottish pensioners get that single fuel payment, or is it to stick with his view and vote that budget down? My advice to uh, my team is to ensure the SNP are absolutely clear. We have given the biggest settlement to Scotland this year under our budget. They now have the powers, they have the resources, they've got no more excuses for the failure to deliver. Can I join the Prime Minister in his, uh, his delight and also his support uh, for Mani Damari and our joint hope that we will see Emily and other hostages released uh, as soon as uh, possible. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister has rightly spoken about the need to res restore and rebuild the public's trust in British politics. Now, we believe a crucial part of that is reforming our electoral system to make it fairer and more proportional. And so does a majority of the British public. And this House voted yesterday in favour of a bill for electoral reform put forward by my honourable friend, the member for Richmond Park. So will the Prime Minister find government time, make it available, so we can consider this bill on electoral reform and restore the public's trust in our politics? Can I thank him for referencing Emily? Um, because I think it is important that we all remember um, her uh, and I say the, the awful torture that her mother is going through, and uh, that's the case for all of the other hostages. It's hard to imagine what it must be like uh, for anybody with friends and family who are still being held hostage after all this time. Look, proportional representation is not our policy. We won't be making time for it. And I just gently say to him, he didn't do too badly under the system as it is. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Given that a significant number of members in this place are, regardless of class, women of a certain age, <laughs> would the Prime Minister agree with me that when a woman of a certain age, or indeed any woman of any age from any background, says they have experienced sexual harassment or inappropriate behaviour, they should be listened to, supported and the perpetrator dealt with? Yeah. I, I certainly agree with that, and I think everybody across the House would. She's right, um, because, Mr Speaker, one of the greatest barriers that women face when coming forward 
and reporting unacceptable behaviour in the workplace, is having confidence that they will be taken seriously. And that requires all of us to put in place mechanisms and arrangements uh, to make that possible. He can't even repeat the pledges that he made just a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. We are here to stop him from damaging the economy, and that is why we are. That, that. I, uh, I want to hear the question. Can we bear not? <laughs> Mr Speaker, they are laughing the same way they all laughed during the budget when they talked about raising NI. They have no idea what people out there are dealing with. And that is why, that is why yesterday we voted against his damaging jobs tax. Even former supporters, Chef Tom Kerridge, who endorsed Labour at the election, said that the budget was catastrophic. He built a real business employing young people, unlike his cabinet of trade union stooges, CV embellishers. And and an actual fraudster. None of them have ever run a business. Why won't he listen to business who are saying his budget is catastrophic? Yeah. Mr Speaker, I thought the scripted jokes were over, but we had another one about them. <laughs> lectures about the economy from the party opposite. They broke the economy, mortgages through the roof, and a £22 billion black hole. And she, compla- she talks about national insurance. She complains about the rise in national insurance week after week. But then two weeks ago, she says that she wouldn't reverse it. She signed trade deals, Mr. Speaker, that had farmers protesting in Whitehall. Now she pretends that she's their champion. She campaigned to remove the cap on migrant worker visas. And now she pretends she's furious about the open borders policy of the last government. Olivia Bailey. Mr Speaker, uh, can I welcome the swift and decisive action this government is taking to secure our borders after the party opposite lost control? control. After the party opposite lost control, Mr Speaker. And in particular, can I welcome the world first deal struck with Iraq last week to tackle smuggling? Does the Prime Minister agree with me that international cooperation, shared intelligence and joint law enforcement is the best way to end the vile smuggling trade? I thank my honourable friend. She's a superb champion for her constituents. She's absolutely right. Uh, The previous government left a broken asylum system. We put a plan in place, the Border Security Command, backed by £150 million, 100 more NCA officers, and we're introducing counter-terrorist-style powers. And my friend is right that our new international coordination, including the landmark Iraqi agreement, and the hard graft is already beginning to pay off, because 9,400 people who have no right to be here have been returned. That's a 30 per cent increase on the numbers of last year.